from uh, from Ross Dellinger at Sports Illustrated. He had a one-on-one interview with uh, with Lane Kiffin, and he kind of set it up by talking about oh, just some really basic stuff to just really get quickly into a candid conversation with the head coach of the Rebels. Now, Borky, why don't you set the stage for this? Because you, you said some interesting things when we were talking this morning that Lane Kiffin is saying things that it seems like other coaches aren't willing to say. Yeah, and that's that's really what I came away from this. If we learned anything from the Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher feud, if you will, these guys are just so accustomed to lying that they don't even know what the truth is anymore. I could be wrong. I feel like everything Lane Kiffin said to Ross Dellinger was actually what he thought about things. I really believe every word that he said here because he's the only one in coaching, college football coaching anyway. I know Notre Dame's basketball coach said uh, adapt or die. Uh, But this is the first college football coach that I've heard say, uh, yeah, kids are picking schools for money. Why shouldn't they? If you don't adapt to that, you're going to get fired stop building facilities and start giving to collective. I mean, just just out in the open with it. He said, ask 100 recruits, any of them, ask 100 recruits what their number one thing is. They will all say NIL. So stop avoiding it. It's what it is, and if you don't adapt, you're dead. First question from Ross Dellinger, from your perspective, what's the state of NIL and where is this going? Lane Kiffin says, I've said from the beginning, players should get paid. They do the work. Why? That should be limited to a scholarship check I disagree with, and they shouldn't be paid all equal. That's not what happens in the real world. Why does their best player get paid the same as their worst player? That's not real life. There's just not a system. It was okay. Open it up. No system behind it. I'm sure people saw these things coming, and a lot of people didn't. These collectives, you basically made what was cheating before legal. You had no rules behind it. You've created something that was going to have a ton of issues to think these things weren't going to go this direction once you allow boosters to do whatever they wanted. Uh, we can all agree with that, right? Yeah, and the next quote is, is where he really ties it in. But the, the thing that we've heard from people, well, what happens when, this play, when the quarterback makes more than his offensive lineman? They're going to stop blocking for him. Your, your boss makes more money than you, right? The best salesman in a company makes more than the worst one. That offensive lineman still wants to get to the NFL. If he doesn't block for his quarterback, that's not happening. Yeah, that that was always kind of a goofy argument to the paying players thing was, well, what happens when one player gets more? That is quite literally life. And everybody's getting something. Yeah. Because they're getting a full scholarship and they're getting what, what we talked about, right? I mean, you know, depending on where you're at school – there's in the neighborhood of an extra twenty thousand dollars in cash that's going to your po- into your pocket each academic year, somewhere between ten and twenty thousand additional. So everybody is getting something. How much is NIL money determining where a recruit attends school? You take a seventeen-year-old who a lot of them don't come from money and family doesn't come from money. If any person tells you that their NIL is not the number one thing. Take a hundred of them and ask the number one thing that's going to make the decision. It's not the size of the stadium, not the head coach, not the campus or the conference. The number one thing will be money. And how would you blame them? A professional player already has money, and they usually follow the money in free agency. So when you don't have it and are three or four years away from getting money in the NFL, you take what is guaranteed. How can you blame them when a lot of them never make it to the NFL? How do you not take it? It's totally changed recruiting. I joke about it all the time, facilities and all that. Go ahead and build build facilities and these great weight rooms and training rooms, but you ain't going to have any good players in them if you don't have NIL money. I don't care who the coach is or how hard you recruit, that is not going to win over money. Hey, Dad, you agree with that? 100%. I was having this discussion with uh, some friends this past weekend. I said, you know, the days of, of donating to things like the Bulldog Club and the Loyalty Foundation and those things, you got to go directly to the players at this point. You got to find 
who your university, your collective is or whatever, and you that's where that money needs to go. Because you can have great buildings, but if you don't have great players, what's the point? Which, by the way, what you just said makes the athletic director's job harder than it has ever been before. They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear people saying that. No, but it, it just kind of is what it is. I mean, you could get to a point where, like, look, the stadium is falling apart. We need that money, and people will donate. But you know, you just we just did this five years ago, and we're going to do it again. No, not interested. Asked if there's a solution. Lane Kiffin said, the thing that seems simple is there's a cap. And this is maybe one of the money quotes. How are we not a professional sport? What is the difference? Players are making money. They can opt into free agency. We're a professional sport, and they are professional players. Contracted employees without contracts. They can get out whenever they want. And how is it not being seen that unless there are changes of rules around caps and contracts, how is every elite college player not at the end of their season entering the portal? This is fascinating. Let's be realistic. In professional sports, if you are the agent of a player and the player can opt into free agency and come back where they want after testing the waters, who says, no, I'm not going to do that unless there's a penalty? How about this? Why did Bryce Young not go into the portal? If you were advising Bryce Young, why do you not go into the portal and walk into Nick Saban's office and say, hey, I want to be here, but I've got to protect myself. So I'm going into the portal. And I want to come back as long as it's matched with what I get out there. The kid would make 10 times what he would have made. How's that not going to happen all the time? It should. It will. Just smart business right there. That is smart, smart business. Hunter Buck says when the SEC meetings happen, he repeats that word for word in the room. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I keep going back to. It's not – everybody talks about how NIL – the problem is NIL. No, no, the problem is the the 365 days of movement. That's the problem. That's the unsustainability. That's the ruining of college football. It's not the money. Because there's still scholarship limits. You can only have 85 players on your team. Guys have to go somewhere. It's the movement. That's the issue. It's that they can get in the portal whenever they want. They can be in there for as long as they want to. And they can do it any time. That's this the one. issue. And, and there's... There's a limit because, you know, you get the one free transfer. And I think if outside of a coaching change, they're probably, the NCAA is probably not going to allow a second free transfer. So you can't do it every year. But Bryce Young, yeah, that, that's a good point. Alabama has dominated the last decade plus of college football. Will NIL bring some parity at least to the very top of the sport? Hmm. Here's Lane Kiffin's answer. If you're Alabama, how does your gap not continue to widen? If you have NIL, you can get the players. You are already signing number one classes. Now there's a money factor involved, and you have top resources for that, and you have the portal, so you are replacing. If you have holes anywhere with guys leaving, they're just going to replace them. You see them doing it. Here's the best player out there not playing in Alabama. They can come take these spots. Now, he compares it to professional sports and where there's a We were looking at the Lane Kiffin answer to the question about whether or not the gap would be narrowed with Alabama, who has dominated for a decade plus. Listen to this example. Take professional sports. Imagine if instead of winning and drafting at the end, you win and draft at the top. You are team whatever, and you draft in the top five every year and get a higher cap than everybody you are playing against, and in free agency, you get the first pick by using your higher cap. How is that not going to separate? Watch how coaches take jobs now. Coaches down to these four jobs. Well, before the decision was based on facilities or whatever. If the coach is smart, the first question should be what? Ross Dellinger responds, tell me about your collective. Lane Kiffin says, exactly. It used to be the stadium, conference, assistant pool, your salary. Nope. First question should be, what is your NIL structure? 
People always ask me when Nick Saban will retire. Before, I said not for a long time. He's driven, and he works like he's 30. Now, it'll be never. Why would he? You get the best players, have free agency to pluck the best players. He'll be there forever. He might double his championships. That's not exactly a soothing thought for all of us. No. There's so much truth there from Lane Kiffin. You uh, you skipped one of his quotes. Okay. That uh, which one? That go, go I like to. because because it's the quote where he says Brian Haydad is right, and I'll read it here. What's the wildest thing you've heard, or is it and is it sustainable? You have kids going to schools now, and they haven't even taken a visit. Some sign because of their they sign because of their NILs. You've got to think that's here to stay. To say that it's not sustainable, why? Ten years ago, no one would have said schools were going to pay coaches ten million a year. Well, they do now. When people argue and say there is no way donors are going to come up with money to play, pay players as much, wait, those are the same donors that pay thirty to forty million to one coach when they fire him because they're they're not going to raise twenty million a year for players. Yeah, they are. It just means they're not going to give it to other things on campus like facilities. I say it all the time. When boosters want something done, it'll get done. There is always money. There is always money to do what the boosters want to do. You know what's really fascinating about Lane Kiffin's example about Alabama and the narrowing mm-hmm. the gap? I've talked to a number of people from, like, different places that are pretty locked in on the college football world. And to a person, they say, Alabama's really not up to speed on the NIL thing. Not to say that they can't catch up. It goes back to what we were talking about last week with with Nick Saban. That his message that ended up being front-page news about Jimbo really started out as kind of a call to action to Alabama fans because he had a bunch of influential people. Is it is it Mike Rodak that, that wrote that story? Yep. Is that, is that right? Yes. I mean, Mike right. Rodak told us that when we talked about, about it last week, that, that that was an influential room. You had local business leaders and CEOs and deep-pocketed people, and Nick Saban was saying to them, we got to catch up. I, I don't know if I've told this story here or not, At, at Auburn spring game, they had the number two player in the country, or top five player in the country, who is from the state of Alabama, not terribly far from Auburn's campus, on their campus. And someone asked someone, so, so, someone not on Auburn staff asked a person on Auburn staff about, oh, you feel great about getting him. And their response was, can't afford him. And the the interaction was almost incredulousness, in, incredulity, well, whatever. Was it? What do you mean you can't afford him? We, we we can't afford him. We're not in the NIL game the way Georgia, Texas A and M, and Texas are. They're playing a different game right now than everybody else. And so, is Alabama going to catch up? Alabama has a wealthy fan base in a state that is growing by leaps and bounds. But they don't have anywhere close to the same donor base or the business donor base that Texas and Texas A&M do, or that Georgia does, for that matter. It's just not the same. They don't. They don't, but there are some jobs where – when they say it's not all about the money, if the money is relatively close, the ability to play for Saban, who can, who is the guy who puts people into the NFL at a higher rate than anybody else does, can win out. So all they've got to do is keep it close with 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 A and M and with Texas, and then they'll somebody, win some of those, but most of those battles. I had someone tell me yesterday that Ole Miss is farther along in its NIL framework than Alabama is right now. Does that mean that Ole Miss is going to recruit at a higher level than Alabama? No, it does not. It just illustrates the point that Alabama's got a long way to go to get to where they need to be I think to continue to recruit at the level at which they have recruited for the last 15 years. Do you think there's some ego involved in that? Do you think it was a lot of Alabama boosters were like, we don't need 
to get too involved in this. Saban will get the players. We don't need to worry about that. And, they had and then Saban is now telling them, no, no, you need to be involved in this. Well, and the under the the underground was so well oiled and robust and comfortable. Mm-hmm. It was machine like. Yeah. Pun intended. It was machine like for Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and getting people to change their ways like that is probably tough to do. I, I was going to ask you, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Um, agree or disagree? Ole Miss is closer to Alabama in terms of NIL capabilities than they are Texas A&M, and, and you already answered it. But oh yeah, not even close. I I, I thought I was going to have to pause. I thought you were going to answer that, ask that differently. Ole Miss is closer to Alabama in terms of NIL capabilities than Alabama is to Texas A&M. That's what NIL I was trying to ask. I just, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah. And, and the answer and to thought, that may be yes also. It's remarkable. I thought you made a, a, good, you made a good point last week, Borky. With Jimbo Fisher and his, his – or maybe it was this week – his constant denials of NIL. He's sending the wrong message. He's yeah. sending the message of, oh, yeah, you can't, you can't get NIL at Texas A&M. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I mean, a recruit should take him at his word and say, oh, okay, well, then I can't consider Texas A&M. If, if those five-star guys couldn't get a deal, what am I going to get? It's the, the whole messaging from them is just utterly mind-blowing. Um, and the thing is, in the first real recruiting cycle of NIL, Alabama finished second in the country. Nick Saban yeah. said what he said, and they finished second in the country in recruiting a year after finishing first. In the previous year, they finished second. You want to guess what they finished the previous year? First, first. again. Yeah. First. I mean, that, that, that's what that's what they do. The year before that, it was, they were second, I think. Georgia was first. But isn't Georgia kind of the formula that people like Nick Saban's afraid of? Because before Georgia amassed a roster that could not possibly lose, were you really impressed by Kirby Smart's coaching ability? No. No. But he built a roster that you couldn't lose with. Give it another two years. Championship game. Give it another two years and tell me what Texas A&M has on the sideline. And Jimbo Fisher is a guy that's won a national championship. You can say his system is outdated and you would not be wrong. But they're working towards being Georgia. They signed seven Five stars. There's roughly 28 in the country every year. They signed a fourth of them. They're going to build a roster that you could not possibly lose with. That, I think, is what Saban's afraid of, and that's the, the power shift in college football. The playoff, again, I say, the playoff has existed for eight years, eight full college football playoffs. Six teams have played for a national championship. There is no parity that will not change. The teams at the top might change, though. We get a question. Um, Ceasefire text line says, will the recent tweaks to Mississippi's NIL law, h- how does that impact? And, and I'm assuming we're talking about the tweaks that allow the school to have more of a role, whereas initially it was the school couldn't be involved, and now it's like, Legally, the schools can work with. I, I'm assuming that's the tweak that we're talking about. And wait, it's got to help. And, and you know, hey, did you brought up something a second ago where you were talking about, you know, Alabama can get, you know, if the, if the money's close. Yeah. This is not a doom and gloom conversation for, for Ole Miss and Mississippi State. It, it's, it's really no. not. There is an opportunity here to go out and get really good players, even if you're yeah. not competing dollar for dollar with Texas A&M or Georgia. Well, never mind that. I mean, hold, hold, that, thought. Recru- hold state- that thought. Hold that thought. said before the break, this should not be a depressing conversation. This is not like bad news for Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So, hey, Dad, you, you were jumping in there before – we, well, we ran out of time, so, yeah. so pick up where you left off. And it's just one of those things I've been saying a lot. It's like, first off, it's not like State and Ole Miss were, were recruiting with these schools anyway. Alabama out-recruits Mississippi State Ole Miss year in, year out, every single year. So at the, at the very minimum, nothing has changed. 
Now, you might have some worries about some other programs starting to find their way up the rankings. You know, if you're State and Ole Miss, you're not worried about Alabama. You're worried about, does Kentucky decide to really push into the NIL game? Does South Carolina decide to do that? If they do that, then yeah, there's some concerns. But this also gives you opportunities, I feel. If there's a player that you really want, you know, go back to last year with Jaheim Otis. Went to Alabama, right? If all of this had been in place a year at that time and you could have really made him a strong offer NIL-wise to stay in state, then maybe he's at state or maybe he's at Ole Miss today. So just I I don't think it's going to – a lot of people think it's going to be the end of Mississippi State. At the very least, they'll still get the players they've always been getting. It might be a little more difficult to pick off some of those four stars, but State and Ole Miss are both, I think, being pretty proactive in the NIL game as we speak right now. Yeah, I agree with that. Does that make sense to you too, Borky? It does. Uh, the, that's why I, I, I am very repetitive. I'm a broken clock, and sometimes I get things right. The thing that I often say to people – Especially when they criticize the transfer portal strategy from Lane Kiffin, my, my response is, what would you rather him do? Continue to try to recruit against Georgia? Because I can tell you how that's going to end. And that was before NIL. It, it, without this era, I can tell you how that was going to end. It's always ended that way. Even Hugh Freeze. People point, well, Hugh Freeze recruited at a national level at Ole Miss. His best recruiting class was number seven. He did, he did a top ten class twice in five years. That's not recruiting competitively with Alabama and Georgia. That's that's sixth in the SEC. Right. And, well, he beat Alabama. Yeah, he beat Alabama twice. What did Alabama do in those two years where Hugh Freeze beat them? They went to the national championship, and they won the national championship. You have not, in traditional ways, been competitive with the best in college football. So this idea that, hey, we can't keep up with Texas A&M – it's a different player now because they've got the oil money and, and all that stuff. But it's the same game, and it's the same number of people that you couldn't keep up with before. And, and to me, and A&M, it, A&M it, was already rec- out recruiting State and Ole Miss. A&M is a threat to Alabama, Georgia. That's where they're trying to get up to. They were already ahead of State and Ole Miss. Here. To me, this – this is what makes Lane Kiffin's approach to recruiting so interesting. Because we've heard him, I mean, you, you, you've seen they're going to focus on the transfer portal for roster building. And the argument against that is it's not sustainable. Well, good grief. In this story where Lane Kiffin was talking about something slightly different, he used over and over and over the idea that, of course, it's sustainable. He wasn't talking about the transfer portal. He was talking about paying kids to come to your school. But it's the same idea. What do you mean it's not sustainable? The the rules have changed everywhere. And while Ole Miss may not be able to compete with elite high school kids on a year-in, year-out basis, they've proven that they can compete in the transfer portal to bring in elite talent. And that's what makes... Lane Kiffin's focus on and almost his infatuation with the transfer portal so fascinating to me because the whole idea that you can't do this every single year, I think Lane Kiffin's going to tell you, no, I think you can, and I'm going to have to be proven otherwise before I stop. And it fits their budget. It fits their budget. Yeah. Yeah. Because the transfer – now, there are some exceptions, of course, like the guy from Pittsburgh, but the transfer running back from SMU isn't commanding the same amount of money as the five-star running back from Atlanta. He's cheaper, but he's also been in a college system. You know he's good, and his body has developed. It, it, It makes so much sense. And Take quarterbacks, for example. Just don't you we don't have to give a number because i don't know but what do you think jackson dark cost compared to what tennessee's going to pay that nico lama leveva i promise you jackson i promise you jackson dark did not cost that i guarantee you that it's a fraction a small fraction it fits your budget hey dad how about this donald 
in Oxford says this type of recruiting is what Mississippi State folks love about the new men's basketball coach, Chris Chance. He sounds a lot like Kiffin in his approach to recruiting. If, if Kiffin is the portal king for football, Jans is going to try to be the portal king for basketball. He's already got three guys out of the portal. It looks like he's going to have two more before this is all said and done. And he brought Jeffries and Moore back out of the portal, so you could say seven. I mean, did, those count next if they year were in. Gonna be the, if they were in and they came out, then count them. And next year is going to be the same. That is going to be Chris Jans' approach to recruiting. Somebody says, I still believe college football coaches win more than all five-star athletes. It's a mix, Explain right? Explain Kirby I mean, Smart, you, then. Yeah. Explain Kirby Smart. You, not, not a great coach. He's not. He's a pretty good defensive coach. A good defensive coach, but offensively that guy is miles behind everybody else. But eventually he just reached a point, like Morky said, a tipping point where he's like, I, he was too big to fail. Let's see what happens this year when they've lost a lot of those defensive studs. He was a really good defensive coach at Alabama. Where he had the best players. Right. But, I mean, who if you had to win a football game, if but, there was a pool of players. are fundamentally sound. Sure. I mean, it's not like oh, they're yeah. out there doing oh, yeah. stupid stuff. But if you had to win one football game, I've got to win one football game with this set of players. It is a, it is a group of players that both coaches get. Who would you rather be coaching this set of players? Kirby Smart or Kyle Whittingham? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I'm going to go Whittingham. I think he's a better coach. But who's going to win a lot more football games? I mean, yeah, I mean, who? if you have even rosters, I mean, there are probably 10, 12 coaches I take ahead of Kirby Smart. But in college football, the way it is, Kirby Smart might be the second guy I take after Saban because he knows how to get players. How about this question? What's the NIL money range for Arch Manning? Well, if you believe the reporting. Well, people that won three sports could tell you. It's big. And, and you know, I mean, I, I think it's two different questions. Are we talking about initially or in his career? Uh, can I read the story? His current on, uh, on three NIL valuation stands at $3.1 million. The only oh. other two, there are only two other, other athletes in the uh, country that are above $2 million. And we talked about one on Bronny James. And then I don't know who Mikey Williams is. He is a five-star basketball player in this upcoming class who they believe is going to get who, gosh, North Carolina Central is his. <laughs> what? Okay. Anyway, well, those are the gonna, only three above $2 million. Arch is going to get a lot more than that. That, that his, his dynamic is more fascinating to me than anybody else because let's pretend he goes to Texas for a second, right? Quinn Ewers is going to be Alabama there. seems to be out. So yeah. Alabama seems to be out. But there are going to be other quarterbacks on that roster and some that come after him as well. If it costs Texas $10 million over four years or whatever to sign him, what's going to happen when the other five-star that Texas signed in the class before is better than him? What do you think that booster that wrote the check is going to think? The next time they ask him to write the check when, hey, I bought you Arch Manning and he's not playing, you're playing this other kid? Well, Kiffin, I'm, I'm never doing Kiffin that again. Said, Kiffin talks about that. Kiffin talks about that. He talks about how boosters are going to have the same kind of power that owners have, where the owner can be like, we're going to start this guy, and the coach is going to sort of be beholden to that. 